What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wean Dog TV. I am your host, Wean Dog. Uh, today's video is be a little bit different. A little, uh, it's going to be on a topic that I haven't uh, talked about in any of my videos. It's going to be about um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Now, if you don't know, uh, if you don't listen to my podcast at all, you probably don't know that I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I've been doing it for a few years now, and I love it. So I wanted to make this video to help those of you who are thinking about starting jiu-jitsu. I just want to encourage you guys to get out there and just at least try it, dude. Because it's changed my life. It's changed so many people's lives. And I know that it can change yours. So maybe you're like me when I first uh, got an interest in jiu-jitsu. Maybe you heard about Brazilian jiu-jitsu um, from from the UFC or MMA or maybe you listen to a podcast where they talk about jiu-jitsu or you saw on a, in a TV show or a movie, anything. And now you've like developed this interest in like, you know, what the hell is jiu-jitsu? What is grappling? Uh, would it be something that I can do? You know, I'm interested in it. How do I start? So that's what I want to sort of cover in this video. So you're probably thinking about going to a jiu-jitsu gym or jiu-jitsu jiu school, but there's, uh, there might be a few things holding you back. Maybe money is a problem. Uh, you're not sure how much it costs to go to jiu-jitsu classes. Or maybe you have some self-esteem issues. Uh, you feel helpless. Or maybe you're just looking to learn some self-defense. Or even just you know to get some exercise and lose some extra weight. Well, let me tell you something right now. There's absolutely nothing that you should be nervous or worried about when it comes to starting jujitsu because all of the factors that I just listed all applied to me when it was finally time for me to make my decision to step into that jujitsu gym for the first time. Now, I originally first learned about jujitsu from watching the UFC, dude. Uh, in a lot of the fights, the fighters would end up on the ground and they would be battling for a dominant position with the end result being either a TKO or a submission. When I was first watching these fights on the ground, I was a little bit confused and even bored at sometimes, dude. I was just thinking, why are these dudes just playing around on the ground? Why don't they just stand back up and just duke it out like men, dude? What are they doing on the ground? But the truth is, I had... No idea what the hell was going on. I wasn't able to identify the brilliance of the martial art that was being displayed in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I mean, I didn't know anything about the guard, uh, full mount, side control, triangle chokes, half guard. I, I knew nothing. I didn't understand what I was seeing. I had no idea that there was this high level grappling going on right in front of me. I had no idea what, you know, what submissions were. I don't know how to do any submissions, but that's what I was watching. But it just wasn't registering in my head. Now, it wasn't until I watched Hoist Gracie in the first UFCs where he would just dominate everyone. All of his opponents, he just completely destroyed because of his high-level skill in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And that's when I sort of realized, oh shit, <laughs> there might actually be something to this Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu thing. Now, my first experience in combat sports goes back to my freshman year in high school when I joined the wrestling team. <laughs> the, f the first day of practice of, of wrestling, um, I was sort of like just like sparring with this dude who was a lot bigger than me and a lot more experienced than me. And he ended up picking me up over his shoulder and just completely body slamming me on the ground. I, felt, I, he, I landed on my back. He knocked all the wind out of me, dude. <laughs> I got up. I couldn't breathe. There was tears just, scream, just streaming down my face. I was so embarrassed, you know, and it was from then on. I just hated wrestling. Now, of course, this dude, he, he did get in trouble because I guess you're not really supposed to be body slamming people at that level of high school wrestling, which I completely understand why. But it didn't matter because after that day, I just completely hated wrestling. And by the end of the year, I had quit the wrestling team and joined the badminton team. How sad is that? It wasn't until I was about 19 years old where my interest in grappling came back. And that's strictly due to jujitsu. 
But there was a problem. There was a huge confidence problem. And I was just, I was scared to walk into any jujitsu class. I didn't know what to expect. And I was just terrified of the thought. I was, I was overweight. I was depressed and I was completely lost when it came to uh, whatever it is I wanted to do with my life. I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. So I was just like this empty shell of a person. And to be honest, I really didn't have any friends. I was a severely introverted kid that stayed indoors all day and played World of Warcraft. Then one day I just got, I just got sick and tired of, you know, just living in the shadows of my own life. Um... It was time to break out of my shell. It was time to go out there, find myself a damn jujitsu gym. So I did a little research and I read about the differences between uh, jujitsu in the gi, which is that, you know, the, the white robe thing that you always see people wearing, and then jujitsu without the gi, which is when you're just wearing like a rash guard and like just leggings. And to be honest, I really couldn't, I couldn't make up my mind. But I found a jiu-jitsu school that was only a few blocks away from me. And it just so happened to be gi jiu-jitsu. So that's what I settled with. And it was cheap too. It's only like 80 bucks a month. 60 bucks a month. 80 bucks a month. I don't know. But it was cheap. Under 100 bucks a month. So I looked at it. I said, you know what? Walking distance from my house. Cheap. Uh, why not? So... <laughs> I told myself, that's where I'm going, dude. So the next week, I stroll on into one of their adult jiu-jitsu classes, just wearing basketball shorts and a t-shirt because I couldn't afford a gi. You know, gis are like 80 to like 200 bucks. I couldn't afford a gi at the time. So I just walked in with my, my shorts, my basketball shorts and a t-shirt. And I was so shy and embarrassed because everyone there was wearing these nice and fancy geese. Some people had gray geese, some had blue, some had white, some had black. And I'm sitting there wearing dirty basketball sh uh, shorts and a t-shirt. Anyways, the instructor greeted me and he said, you know what, young man, let me go get you one of our spare geese that we have in the gym. So he went out, he went to the back room and he brought me this, this, <laughs> this gee top. And it was like it was like three sizes too small for me. I could barely get my big ass shoulders in there. So I was just there once again looking even more ridiculous in this gi top and basketball shorts. Very, very embarrassing for me. And to say the least, I got my ass whipped upon, dude, that first day. And for a couple of reasons. One, I was just so out of shape. Very out of shape. I could barely do any of the warm-ups. I was just drenched in sweat, dude. I was huffing and puffing. I couldn't breathe. And two, because I had absolutely no idea what the hell was going on in this jiu-jitsu class. I had no idea about any of the techniques the professor was talking about. I had no idea about positions, submissions. I was completely lost. That's why I was getting my ass whipped. So... If you don't know, the typical way a jiu-jitsu class works is that in the beginning, it starts with warm-ups. Maybe you'll do a couple laps around the around the gym. Maybe you'll do some sit-ups. Maybe you just do some stretches. And then it goes into the professor teaching the class different you know, techniques, positions, or submissions. And at the end of the class, you all get to just spar. You, you, uh, you team up with a partner and you just roll together. You just, that's it, you're, just, you're free sparring. With, you're just trying to, trying to apply any techniques you learned so far in your jiu-jitsu journey and you're trying to get the submission you're just trying to survive anything and that's basically how jiu-jitsu class works and so the first day when we started to roll at the end of the class i got my ass whipped so hard that i was having flashbacks to that first day at wrestling in high school when i got body slammed dude i was like here we go again maybe i'm just not meant to be a grappler you know maybe it's just not it's not in my blood it's not in my bones and my blood I'm not meant to be a goddamn grappler. I'm not no Hulk Hogan or uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. I'm not. I'm, I'm nothing, dude. And I just remember thinking, like, what the hell am I doing in this place? I don't belong here. But something inside kept forcing me to go to this class every single day. Every single day, I went to that jujitsu class, and I quickly learned the formula to becoming a good jujitsu practitioner. And it's, it's as easy as the more you go, 
the more you learn. And that's it. And it took me well over six months of me just getting destroyed, just getting my ass whipped, dude. Over six months, well over six months, until I finally was able to pull off an actual, real submission, dude. I was so excited. I got someone, I got my rolling partner in an Americana. It's like where, you know, you bend the arm backwards like this, like, ugh, and they tap. I was so happy. I, I, I just felt this surge of confidence just, just pulsing through my body, dude. I'm like, oh, my God. I just submitted somebody, dude. That's jujitsu right there. I did it. I can do it. And that's when I realized I really could do it. I ended up staying at that jujitsu school for about a year and a half before I decided that I wanted to try something else and I wanted to train in nogi jujitsu. So I headed down to this other local jujitsu school that focused in nogi and it was called 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. Now, the first time I took a class there, it was a completely new experience for me. You know, no one was wearing geese. There was people that were dressed up like I was the first day I went to a jiu-jitsu class, basketball shorts and a t-shirt. So I'm like, oh, damn, I can relate to these people. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, I had become so used to all these different gi chokes, you know, where you grab the lapel and then like all these different uh, grips that you use in gi jiu-jitsu. And so starting in no gi jiu-jitsu, I just had to throw all that completely out the window because I didn't know if I was going to go back to gi jiu-jitsu. And so that's how this is like a very strange contrast between gi and no gi jiu-jitsu. It was like I was starting at square one all over again. And to my surprise, I quickly fell in love with no gi jiu-jitsu. Uh, just as just a personal thing, I, I just felt like I had this new freedom and dexterity that I hadn't had with the the gi uh, jujitsu. But however, dude, I was still getting completely destroyed by the other students until something clicked in my head. I had realized that I have to I have to stop worrying about submitting people or getting to a more dominant position. You know, that's all I was thinking about. I was like, all right, I'm going to try to get this guy in the triangle choke. I'm going to try to arm bar this dude. I'm going to try to get a leg lock on this dude. That was my mentality. But that's wrong. What I realized is that I had to focus more on just surviving. And this is probably one of the most important things to keep in mind when you're new to jujitsu. Just, just worry about surviving. Worrying about submitting somebody should be the very, very, very last thing you should be thinking about when you're new to jujitsu. But rather, learn how to escape and defend against certain positions and submissions. Um, from personal experience, uh, just trying to survive and putting myself in dangerous spots has helped me improve my submission game. And this is simply because I can analyze and learn what my opponent is doing right and what they're doing wrong when they're trying to submit me. And over time, you'll be able to recognize certain submissions and they'll become very easy for you to defend against and then eventually pull off, meaning you'll be able to do them like a savage. And you know, what I'm trying to say in this video is there's nothing, absolutely nothing that you should be worried about or afraid of when you're walking into that jiu-jitsu gym for the first time. And you know what? Everyone that I've met in jiu-jitsu classes, they've all, been, they've all been super nice to me and super friendly. So it's very important for you to not be afraid to ask any questions about anything. And obviously, don't be discouraged if you show up to a jiu-jitsu class and completely get your ass kicked. Um... Because everybody gets their ass kicked their first few months or first year or even first couple years. I know I did. God damn it. I still get my ass kicked. Also, if your size or shape has you discouraged about joining jujitsu, don't let it, dude. Just get all those thoughts and throw them out the window. Because I know when I first started jujitsu, I was very well overweight. I was out of shape. I couldn't do any of the warm ups. I was not flexible at all. You know, I couldn't do anything, but just me showing up every day and just attempting to do, to, uh, to do the stuff, I was able to shed a ton of weight, 
I was able to get my flexibility back. I was able to just keep up with the class. And that's the important thing. Just keep in mind, don't let any of the things discourage you, whether it's the, the weight, the size, the nerves. Don't let it discourage you, dude. Just keep showing up. Pay attention. Meet cool people. Have fun. Because that's what jujitsu is all about.